hi everyone who might be listening to this um, at some point. We hope you join us from wherever you are. Uh, my name is Nisha. I'm the uh, editor of Photography Plus, which is um, a digital photography magazine uh, run out of PhotoWorks in Brighton. Um, and so I'm here today uh, speaking from London, talking to Nadia Huggins, uh, who's one of um, our contributors to issue 14 on the environment. Um, so thank you so much, Nadia, for joining us. Um, yeah, I'll let you introduce yourself. Yeah, thank you so much, Nisha. Um, yeah, as you said, I'm Navio. Uh, I'm a photographer uh, from St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Um, although every time I introduce myself, I always say I'm born in Trinidad, grew up in St. Vincent, uh, which I think is an important thing because I consider myself a sort of a Caribbean person in, in the more expansive sense. Okay. Um, my work is um, sort of like a crossroads between conceptual and documentary. And um, I sort of moved between the land and the sea, um, documenting um, that sort of experience of what it is to be from the Caribbean, um, you know, focusing on sort of environmental um, things, but also just the kind of everydayness of being in the Caribbean, like what that experience is like. Uh, so my work focuses on a lot, a lot of themes surrounding belonging, you know, sense of place, identity and memory. And um, yeah, my practice has been kind of slowly um, expanding based on that. Okay, great. Yeah, thank you. It's so exciting uh, to meet you because I feel like we're in such touch around the issue. Um, yes. Yeah, so I think just for first question, if you just, I know you talked a little bit about it in the interview um, for the magazine already, but just, um, I don't know if you could tell like some of the listeners, like how you became interested in photography. Um, yeah, just what your sort of photographer origin story is. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, I mean, I think I've been fortunate in the sense that I have creative parents. Um, my dad is an architect. My mom was a seamstress. And um, I think more from my dad's side, um, he sort of like fostered an interest in like just visual imagery on a whole. Um, you know, so I grew up looking at a lot of images and being exposed to a lot of art, even though I'm based on an island that's sort of very cut off from that world in some ways. Um, and, you know, like growing up, he would always take me out to like help him document like a building, um, mostly for like, you know, work purposes, but it really kind of gave me an introduction into the importance of documentation. Um, and then I just, like when I was like 17, I just got interested in, you know, like typical kid picking up a camera for the first time would take pictures of like, I was a focus leaves and whatever, you know, and um, I think I just developed that's a real kind of understanding of the relevance and importance of what I could do with an image um, moving forward. Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's so helpful to hear you just talk about it um, because your words are really evocative, but it's nice to sort of imagine like or hear um, in verbal words the like yeah. The story. Yeah. Um, yeah. You showed us really beautiful <clears throat> images in your interview, and I was just wondering if you could. Uh, walk our readers and listeners um, through them a little bit. So maybe tell us what the story or inspiration behind a couple of them are and what it feels like to look back at them now. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, like the images, the, the last, I don't remember which images I have in the selection. So the, the first one that you have is actually yeah. from last year from the volcanic eruption okay. uh, that we recently had in St. Vincent. Um, I mean, that is such a, a, a great departure from a lot of the other imagery I was doing because that was a kind of a more like a response to this sort of disaster unfolding. Yeah. Um, and really what I was trying to do with that work, I mean, typically, you know, when disasters have been photographed in the Caribbean, it's always like a sort of outsider perspective yeah. on it. I mean, it's to get the most, um, you know, dynamic and tragic kind of information across. So... There's a certain way that imagery is done to relate um, disasters that doesn't necessarily um, show a kind of a multiple perspective of what's really going on. Um, and I have been doing a lot of work actually leading up to this volcanic eruption, just trying to raise awareness, educate people about what to expect, even though I had never been through an okay. eruption myself. Right. Um, and I think just seeing, like actually living through that experience and understanding what actually happens um 
kind of pushed me to think about documenting um, a disaster in a different way to sort of show, you know, texture of what like ash looks like on leaves um, trying to relate that sense of scale, um, giving a kind of a color, like an authentic color palette um, to what's actually happening. So to create a more kind of experiential, like immersive experience of people to relate to. Um, so if, if, if the future generations, they can look at an image and say like, um, like I can, you know, understand what to expect when when this happens. So that first image uh, with the palm leaves mm -hmm. is actually just sort of me um, driving into one of the more uh, vulnerable zones, like okay. probably a week or so after the first series of eruptions. Um, and, you know, just seeing everything was just like super muted, you know, obviously from all the ashes, just kind of covering all the trees. And um, that particular image I'm shooting through like a car window, you know, so it gives it that sort of sense of dreaminess. But then that's also just kind of me coming from a certain perspective, you know, not being able to wind down my windows because it's just thinking of like breathability of like ash. Right. Um, but just dis disrupting this idea of like, you know, this tropical notion of what the Caribbean is, is like these like beautiful palm trees and the ocean and sand, but like showing it from a different perspective of this kind of um, destructive um, sort of violent um, disaster that has happened. Um, you know, so just thinking of like this, these iconic images and, and trying to subvert it in some ways. Um, so that's really that what that image was about. Um, okay. I mean, the, the others, you know, that's, I feel like that's a whole world again you know that that kind of goes into underwater environments um mm -hmm. uh that image that you, you have on the issue is um is from a series i have called circle no future which focuses on like a group of you know young black adolescent boys who go swimming on mm -hmm. the beach that i grew up on but again i mean there's still there's still like a, a kind of a connection between all the work because obviously this is a volcanic island so i mean this this island that they jump off of is actually like a volcanic formation and that's like kind of out in the ocean and it's it's kind of interesting it, it sort of looks like a um uh like a, a theme park in a way like these guys climb up on these rocks and jump off okay. and i think that's also very typical imagery that you see coming out of the caribbean of like young boys jumping off of like jetties or like boats or whatever but um for me, I'm kind of interested in showing that moment that happens once they break through the surface and that kind of like vulnerability and fragility um, that the body expresses uh, once it's sort of, you know, goes through um, that layer, you know, that, that ocean, that, that surface of the ocean to kind of transform and show a different perspective um, mm -hmm. of what it is being from these places. Um, so I, th I think a lot of my imagery is about that. I mean, it's just very, everyday things that that is, has always been photographed in a way but showing it from right. from a, a you know a different layer a, a different depth so to speak you know yeah it's really helpful yeah. to hear you talk about it in terms of vulnerability um and I think I from listening to you say that I think I understand a little bit better um what you mean in terms of like trying to re-represent things that have sort of been overrepresented maybe in some like sort of dominant stereotypical images of the Caribbean and um yeah instead to like show uh like the what's intimate or vulnerable about it um I can really see that in the in the first image of um with the ash so yeah thank you for explaining that yeah no problem uh the next um question I guess is unfortunately a COVID related one which I know everyone is tired of talking about um but I think just reflecting on how much I've changed in the last two years and how much like my engagement um with the world has had to has had to shift um I think I'm just curious about like what um how the reality of the pandemic has affected your practice because I know that for lots of artists especially um, people whose work is really based in community um, it's 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 been interesting and like really difficult but also kind of transformative for lots of people um, so I don't yeah. know if, yeah if that's true for you too I mean you know it's, it's in, in the sense of photography it's, it's been kind of interesting because my work has in a way already been 
um, going in that direction even before the pandemic in the sense that I work a lot outdoors. Um, you know, I work in the ocean, so it's mm -hmm. a different kind of way that you can be separate from somebody. I mean, you're not really close to them anyways in the ocean. And then you have like a layer of like salt water between you. Um, so it hasn't really affected that so much. I mean, I, I can, I would say that I have been spending a lot more time like hiking, for example, like I've been trying to work on like a series of images, like in like the interior of the island. So like going more into like forested areas. Okay. Um, but my practice has always been a very solitary experience okay. in the sense that I do Yes, I work with people to some mm -hmm. extent, um, but that initial phase of like developing a project is really just about being with myself, being in nature mm -hmm. and documenting that experience before I start to figure out like how to introduce people into that. Okay. Um, so in that sense, it doesn't feel like I've um, mm -hmm. changed much of what I've done other than the fact that I know now the importance of documenting the natural environment because I feel like this pandemic has really made people realize how important yeah. um, our connection to nature is you know yeah yeah and it was like a really I, re I remember reading in your interview though the way you talked about like one of the things that's interesting about uh, working with nature is that like you can feel the sort of human presence um, even if the images itself are purely of the natural world and yeah that's yeah. um I don't know they're just post or not post pandemic but in the in the current version of the pandemic um it's so palpable in loads of people's work the kind of traces of society um everywhere even yeah. even in the natural world so yeah yeah yeah, thank you. Um, so in your written interview with us, you described wanting to change the way the Caribbean is often represented. And we've talked a little bit about this already, um, but uh, to move away from um, imagery that characterizes the Caribbean as a place for tourism or um, only in the aftermath of a natural disaster. Um, so I, I found your photographs really moving and when I looked at them, I feel like I'm seeing a kind of completely different world that these kinds of dominant represent representations don't allow for. Um, so just wondering if you can tell us more about how your work intervenes in these representations and what kind of like possibilities or worlds they seek to open up or communicate instead. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's 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 very explorative for me because obviously the you know the history of photography in the Caribbean is still very young, um, especially in the English speaking Caribbean. I think places like Cuba and um, yeah. um Dominican Republic and these places have a much older history with photography, um, and they've used it in very particular ways. Um and you know, the references that we we all have, I speak, I mean, I don't know like most photographers in the Caribbean, like that has been the starting point. It's like think, thinking of that kind of colonial gaze in a way of like how to like restructure the way the Caribbean is seen and who it's meant for. Um, and it's very, very oftentimes not really about us, for us. Right. Um, so I, I guess my challenge is then trying to like figure out like how to unlearn that imagery um, and create something that feels more like my experience. Right. Um, you know, like you still you're still gonna use certain visual symbols and mm -hmm. there, there's things that just are like you know like you're in a very small space. There's a limited amount of things right. that you can photograph. Um, yep. But I guess my challenge is now trying to figure out, like how to um, to restructure it in a way that feels like it's coming from an internal perspective, uh, a local's perspective, so to speak, um, and you know relate that some somehow. Um, to a different audience or to just kind of um yeah help people to see to see the Caribbean in a different way yeah it's, it's, it's it is a very like experimental kind of thing and I don't I don't know if I do it successfully like I I hope I am but um I feel like I'm just yeah I'm trying I mean I I, I was really moved by your images and about the way that they um seem to foreground like a kind of power and joy and freedom that's like possible both uh, in the image itself but like through the process of photography so um yeah no thank you for that um I, 
yeah, I can imagine that there's just, it's like quite a process of trying to unlearn some things, but also, um, yeah, work with uh, what, what there is, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think, I think it's also just kind of, you know, thinking about the, I guess, like political agendas that have existed before. And it's like, yeah, you know, we all, we all have different ideas about who we want to be. Um, you know, this, this, this thing about Caribbean futures has been coming up a lot recently right. and like, what does that look like for us, you know? Um, yeah. And I suppose that's, that's the role of the artist now is to like figure out that image moving forward and in, into that new era. Right, about like what the future could, uh, what a Caribbean future could look like, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think in your interview, you talked a little bit about um, how, sort of like thinking about your your work in relation to the past and it does seem like there's um yeah there's a thing you're working with about looking towards the future while also reckoning with the past or like there has to be a kind of honesty about like things as they were even as we we look forward yeah 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 um, I mean, with that, I think I'll just ask you what your current interests and projects are, or if um, there's anything yeah, new you're working on that yeah. you wanted to share with our readers. <laughs> I mean, you know, like, I guess, like, the volcanic eruption has impacted a lot um, of what I consider valuable in terms of the image. I mean, I, I guess I've been thinking more about the social impact that my images could have on people. Um, and that's becoming more and more important to me as I become older. Um, so definitely thinking about like creating an archive. Um, I mean, in terms of what I've been working on, like I, I just did a residency in Haiti. So, you know, you know, being in a place that's kind of like the first uh, yeah. um, sort of free black nation um, in the Western hemisphere has really been sort of like moving to me to experience that and see, um, I guess this idea of what, the rest of the Caribbean could have been like or looked like if we had resisted in the same ways. Okay. Um, yeah. So, uh, you know, I'm just trying not to get too tied up in the historical all the time, um, right. but understanding its importance and using that as a foundation moving forward. So okay. I think for me, like the natural environment still stands mm -hmm. to be one of the most important things um, to document. I mean, it's not necessarily going to be just be like natural disasters or whatever like that could take shape in many different ways you know um mm -hmm. so for me I think I'm just more invested in creating a record of what it is like to be on an island during a certain period of time and you know create something very um whole yeah so that 100 years from now somebody could look back and be like okay well, this is what the Caribbean looked like during this time okay right yeah. that yeah, that 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 makes sense in relation to some of the work you showed us in in the issue. Um, okay, so if that's your new project, okay. Yeah, cool. I would say so. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I like you know like it's it's so hard to pin it down to one thing because I have been photographing a lot of different things recently. Okay. But I have been focused more on working within like forested areas at the okay. moment. Okay. Right. Yeah. How long was your residency in Haiti? Uh, it was a month. Okay. So yeah, like, so I did in December. Yeah, quite a lot of time to like get to know. Um, yeah. Things there. Okay. Yeah. Great. Um, yeah, I think that's all for me, actually. I don't know if you have any last remarks or. Um... Um, no, I mean, I think just thank you so much. Just giving me the opportunity to, to share the work and I hope um, it resonates with someone out there. Yeah. Um, I mean, I and think... then, the, you know, people could learn something new from it or like at least it'll inspire people to do a bit more research and okay yeah and show an interest yeah I think that's definitely true I've um, gotten lots of uh, really positive responses about um, your your contribution to our issue so thank you so much Nadia Great. thank you so much Nisha.